Step 4. Simple Harmonic Oscillator 2. In this step, we will continue our discussion of the Simple Harmonic Oscillator, but show you how to solve it using the Dirac method. This is a very elegant method and very powerful and very suited for our needs later when we quantize the electromagnetic field. So, the starting point is the same. We've got our Hamiltonian for the simple harmonic oscillator given by the following expression, where our operators for position x and momentum p satisfy the commutation relation where the commutator is equal to i h bar. And our goal is the same as well. We would like to know the energies and the eigenvectors of the Hamiltonian. So how do we go about solving that? Step number one is to introduce dimensionless position and momentum operators. This is a fancy way of saying we just rescale our x hat and p hat by some numbers. In particular, the capital X is given by this expression and capital P is given by this expression. I encourage you to go and check that m times omega divided by h bar, the square root of the whole thing, has the dimensions of inverse meters. While this, uh, this scalar over here has the dimensions of the inverse momentum. So from now on, we will work with these new operators, capital X and capital P. And if we substitute back into our expression for the original commutator, we will find out that the new rescaled dimensionless position momentum operators satisfied that their commutators is equal to i. Now the i h now the h bar factors out. And we can also substitute back into our Hamiltonian and find out the new form of the Hamiltonian given by one half h bar omega times x squared plus p squared. We haven't done anything here. We have just rescaled our operators and then obtained the corresponding rescaled Hamiltonian. Step number two is to introduce new operators. Now, these new operators are a sum of the, our x and p's. In particular, we say a hat is equal to one over square root of two times capital X plus i p. From its form, we can see that A is not a Hermitian operator. Hermitian operators have the property that the operator dagger is equal to the operator itself. Here we can see that if we take the Hermitian conjugate of A, denoted by A dagger, then we obtain the following expression. We have 1 over square root of 2 times x minus ip. Now, these operators are extremely important when it comes to describing light using quantum mechanics. So I encourage you to commit them to your memory. And also their names. A is known as the annihilation operator, while A dagger is known as the creation operator. Now these uh, uh, names, this annihilation operator, which is rather pessimistic, and uh, this uh, A dagger creation operator is rather optimistic, there is a reason why they are called this, and we will see that in the next couple of slides. But for now, what we do is, again, we want to check what is the commutator for A and A dagger. Knowing the commutators between your, uh, between your operators is very important. And we can substitute back into using the commutator for X and P, and we find that A and A dagger do not commute. In fact, their commutator is equal to 1. I encourage you to do this calculation by yourself. And doing the same thing that we did in the step one. We substitute into our Hamiltonian for capital X and capital P to find out the final form of the Hamiltonian that we will use in the rest uh, of this step. In particular, it's h bar omega times a dagger a plus one over two. Now, this form of the Hamiltonian applies to any harmonic oscillator. We have started with a um, harmonic oscillator of mass m, but in fact, this form applies to any as we will see in the final step of this lesson. So, step three, let's solve our initial eigenvalue problem. We're not going to go in detail into the solutions, but we're just going to consider a little bit simpler problem first. Rather than solving for the eigenvalues uh, and eigenvectors of the initial Hamiltonian, h hat, we will solve for this operator. Capital N hat is equal to a dagger a. This operator also plays an important role in quantum mechanics, and therefore it has its own name called the number operator. Why is it the number operator? 
we will see in, in the, very shortly. Its eigenvalue problems reduces to the following equation. n hat applied to uh, the eigenvector psi n is equal to n times psi n. So applying the number operator to our eigenvector psi n gives us the number of excitations denoted by n in that eigenvector. And n can uh, vary and be integers of 0, 1, 2, and higher. Knowing this, we can now ask, well, what's the, what's the action, what's the transformation that the operators a and a dagger uh, induce when we apply them to our eigenvectors of the number operator? One can show, using the commutation relations for a and a dagger, that when we apply a dagger to the eigenvalue psi n, we increase its energy by one step. We increase the number of excitations in our system by one. In other words, we move from psi n to psi n plus one, with this important factor in front to ensure that our vectors remain normalized. So now you can see why a dagger is called a creation operator, and it creates an excitation of energy in our system. We go from energy n into energy n plus one. We go from the eigenvector corresponding to energy n called psi n and obtain the eigenvector psi n plus one corresponding to energy e n plus one. And on the other hand, if we apply the annihilation operator a to psi n, we move down our ladder. In particular, when we have a applied to psi n, we obtain the eigenvector psi n minus one. We decrease the energy by one excitation. And again, to make sure that our vectors are properly normalized, we must introduce the following, uh, following factor of square root of n. Now there's a small trick how to remember these square roots of n plus one and n. Always look at, your uh, um, look at your equation, and in particular, look at your indices. Here we have n, and here we have n plus one. The square root is taken of the higher of these two indices. At the top here, for the uh, creation operator, we have n and n plus one n plus 1 is higher, therefore we must uh, uh, multiply by square root of n plus 1. Down here, we've got indices n and n minus 1. n is higher, therefore we take the square root of n and multiply by that. So what happens if we keep applying our annihilation operator and we keep moving down the ladder of energies? We reach a state psi 0, and we said that n goes from 0 to 1 to 2 and higher. There is no n equals minus 1. So, our annihilation operator applied to the lowest energy eigenvector, psi zero, gives us the number zero. In other words, it annihilates our state. And we will see the importance of this much later. In fact, normally we don't write psi zero for the lowest energy state, we just write het zero. But I urge you to be cautious, there's a big difference between het zero, which is a vector, properly normalized, and the number zero. So a applied to the ket zero is equal to zero. But zero and ket zero are not the same thing. Now, let's move to our original problem of uh, solving the simple harmonic oscillator with this Hamiltonian written uh, in, in, our, uh, in the following basis, where we express it in terms of a dagger a. We have seen the properties of this operator, a dagger a. So now, to solve our eigenvalue problems, we immediately apply what we have learned in step three. Our Hamiltonian can be rewritten as h bar omega times capital N plus a half. We immediately see that the eigenvectors that we have used in our discussion for the number operator are also eigenvectors of our simple harmonic oscillator Hamiltonian. So we have h hat, uh, applied to our eigenvector psi n is equal to e n times psi n. And we also immediately obtain the values for the eigenenergies given as this, which we have seen in our previous step, step three, where we solved the uh, harmonic oscillator using uh, position representation. These are very important results, and I urge you to commit them to your memory. Also, what you must remember is that Annihilation operator applied to the lowest energy eigenstate, ket zero is equal to the number zero. Furthermore, starting 
from this lowest uh, energy eigenvector zero, we can generate all of our higher energy eigenvectors n, psi n, just by subsequent multiplication or uh, application of a dagger. So to obtain the eigenvector psi n, all we have to do is start from our lowest energy eigenstate and apply the creation operator n times. Of course, keeping in mind that we have to renormalize the vector in order to make its norm equal to 1, which is achieved by this following factor over here, square root of n factorial. And one last important property is that these eigenvectors psi n form an orthonormal basis. In other words, the uh, eigenvectors psi n corresponding to different energies are orthogonal, so when we take their inner product, they are equal to 0. And now let's start with the ground state and look at some of its properties. We have that the energy of the ground state is given by the following expression. Now, let's pause here and think what this means. This tells us that a quantum simple harmonic oscillator, even when it's in its lowest energy uh, eigenstate, still possesses some finite amount of energy corresponding to h bar times omega divided by 2. Compare that with a classical pendulum, which is swinging and losing slowly energy. Its lowest energy eigenstate is when it stops moving, when it's zero. That's not true for a quantum mechanical oscillator. Even in its lowest energy eigenstate, it still has finite amount of energy. Does that mean that the oscillator in the quantum world moves even though it's in the lowest energy eigenstate? We can check that by computing the average position. So. To make things simple, we stick for now to the dimensionless position operator and we compute its average. That's given by the following in a product where we sandwich it between the, uh, uh, between the state of the lowest energy uh, uh, denoted by zero. So substituting for x, we obtain the following expression. And this is where we start applying our rules for how creation and annihilation operators function. If we apply our annihilation operator A on the state 0, we know that gives us the number 0. So the first term in our sum disappears. What happens when we apply A dagger, the creation operator, to our lowest energy eigenstate 0? Well, we know that we move one energy higher and we obtain psi 1. But we just said that these two energy um, eigen eigenvectors corresponding to 0 and corresponding to psi 1, they are orthogonal. Therefore, when we take the inner product of 0 and psi 1, we obtain 0. So both terms disappear. In other words, the average dimensionless position of our quantum harmonic oscillator is also 0. But we just said that such an oscillator has energy, yet we just showed that the average position is 0. The catch is in that we are talking about the average. It can still have some spread of positions. To see if it truly possesses some spread of positions, we must compute the second moment. We must compute the variance of the dimensionless position operator given by the following. Now we compute the average of x squared. And it's straightforward. We substitute for uh, x, we square the whole expression to obtain the following sum. Now we can see again, if we apply a squared to our lowest energy eigenstate 0, we obtain 0. Applying 1a to 0 gives us 0 already. So applying a again still gives us 0. a dagger squared, on the other hand, gives us the eigenstate psi 2, which is orthogonal to 0. So that term also vanishes. We have only the remaining two terms, the a dagger a plus a a dagger. So let's see what happens. a dagger a, we said, is the number operator. So if we apply it to 0, we get also 0. But there is one catch. There is this remaining term a, a dagger. Now what we do is we apply our commutation relation. We want to reverse the order of how a and a dagger act. We want a dagger on the left and a on the right, known as the normal ordering. So, using our commutation relation that a a dagger minus a dagger a is equal to 1, we obtain our expression over here. So our average of x squared reduces to one half 
of the average of 1 plus a dagger a. And we know what's the number operator a dagger a applied to 0. It's 0. So all we are left is with our expression equal to a half. So now we obtain a finite quantity. In other words, the ground state possesses some fluctuations. It's not moving, yet its position is spread over around the mean given by 0. We can do the same thing for p. The only thing that changes is that p is equal to 1 over square root of 2a minus a dagger, and we obtain the same result. The average of the momentum is 0, yet uh, its variance is finite. It's given by 1 over 2. So now we want to know what's the, what are the fluctuations for our initial physical variables x and p. What we do, we just, we just substitute for, uh, for our capital X, capital P, and we obtain the two following expressions. Now, from your basic uh, course on quantum mechanics, you know that if we multiply these two fluctuations, they must be larger than some value. In fact, they must be larger than h bar over 2. Well, look at that. If we multiply the fluctuations for x and p, what we obtain is that delta x times delta p is equal to h bar over 2. In other words, we saturate the Heisenberg uncertainty relation. What we call such a state is that such a state is the minimum uncertainty state. The ground state of a simple harmonic oscillator satisfies this following property, that it saturates the Heisenberg uncertainty relation. Other higher states like Psi 1 and Psi 2 do not. When we multiply the fluctuations in x and p, they will be larger than h bar over 2. In the remaining of this module, we will see other examples of minimum uncertainty states. This concludes our discussion of the Dirac way of solving the simple harmonic oscillator.